Good morning. This is our 10 a.m. Zoom YouTube service at St. Peter's Episcopal Church. And good to have you with us this morning. It's funny, I want to give you the guidelines for in-person worship, but we're not in person, so I don't need to do that. Um, good to have you with us this morning. I do need someone to read the first lesson. Our first reader is not feeling well. I'm going to look at the computer for a second and see if someone would be willing to read it, it's from Romans. Anybody? Is that you, Jim, saying yes? Like, oh, Karen, Karen, Karen gave me a thumbs up. All right. So Karen will do it. All right. Thank you so much. All right. And uh, we've been doing this a while now, but if you're on Zoom, remember to keep yourself mute until, unless you are actually speaking, and we will take everyone off of mute for the piece and at the end of the service. Uh, and the opening hymn is God of Grace and God of Glory.
blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be God's kingdom now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open and all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. We will now have our hymn of praise. protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy. Increase and multiply upon us your mercy, that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not the things eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A prayer for social justice. Grant, O oh God, that your holy and life-giving spirit may so move every human heart, and especially the hearts of the people of this land. The barriers which divide us may crumble, suspicions disappear, and hatred cease. That of the divisions being healed, we may live in justice and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We will now have our first reading from Romans. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Romans. The spirit helps us in our weakness, for we do not know how to pray as we ought, but that very spirit intercedes with sighs too deep for words. And God, who searches the heart, knows what is the mind of the spirit, because the spirit intercedes for the saints according to the will of God. We know that all things work together for good for those who love God, who are called according to his purpose. For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, in order that he might be the firstborn within a large family. And those whom he predestined, he also called, and those whom he called, he also justified and those whom he justified, he also glorified. What then are we to say about these things? If God is for us, who could be against us? He who did not withhold his own son, but gave him up for all of us, will he not with him also give us everything else? Who will bring any charge against God's elect? It is God who justifies, who is to condemn. It is Christ Jesus who died, yes, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who indeed intercedes for us. Who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will hardship or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? As it is written, for your sake, we are being killed all day long. 
we are accounted as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us, who loved us. For I am convinced that neither debt nor life, nor angels, nor rulers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus, our Lord. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Could you lead the psalm, Karen? Today we'll be reading Psalm 119. Your decrees are wonderful, therefore I obey them with all my heart. When your word goes forth, it gives light. It gives understanding to the simple. I open my mouth and pen. I long for your commandments. Turn to me in mercy as you always do to those who love your name. Steady my footsteps in your word. Let no iniquity have dominion over me. Rescue me from those who oppress me and I will keep your commandments. Let your countenance shine upon your servant and teach me your statutes. My eyes shed streams of tears because people do not keep your law. We will now have the reading of our gospel. Kathy, I believe you're on mute. Okay. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of all the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field when someone found and, <clears throat> and hid. Then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught every kind of fish. When it was full, they threw it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? They answered, yes. And he said to them, therefore every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
I just had to have it. How often have you heard those words? I just had to have it. Usually people say those words when they've made a big purchase or they've worked very hard for something that they just had to have. I was thinking back in my life at times when I just had to have it and this is what came to mind. Um, when I was 11, I wanted a skateboard because everybody else had gotten skateboards for Christmas and I had missed the memo. So I saved my lunch money, I did chores. For months I did this because I just had to have that skateboard and I got it. Another time I think is when I got my first iPhone. Now I had been kind of on the plan where I took the free phone that came with my contract but I really wanted an iPhone. And I didn't like to spend too much money on my phone but I just had to have that iPhone. So I paid the extra money to have that iPhone. One of you just had to have something. I thought about this phrase, I just had to have it, as I was reading through the series of parables we have in this morning's gospel, and we have a series of five of them. But two of them reminded me about this phrase. Because in two of them, we have someone with something they just had to have. The first is actually a someone who finds a treasure buried in a field and he goes and he sells all that he has to get that treasure. And the second is a merchant, a merchant of pearls. And he sees this great pearls, huge price. And he too sells all that he has to get that pearl. And all these are kingdom of God parables. They all begin with the kingdom of God is like a treasure hidden in the field and someone selling all that he has to buy. The kingdom of God is like. So I just had to have it. I can see those two people in the parable saying that, but they sold all that they had. This isn't some purchase that's a month's salary or a year's salary. This is all that you have. When have you bought something or wanted to get something that required you selling all that you have? I mean everything, your house, your car, everything. I asked myself this question and I couldn't think of any time like that. And so I said, but when would, when would I sell everything that I had? What would I sell that for? And what came to mind was that it would be the life of a loved one. For that, I would sell everything to save their life. Of course, this is a parable. It's the kingdom of God. So what, what does this mean about the kingdom of God? Does this mean that we are to sell all that we have for the kingdom of God? Well, that sounds like it could be right. But that left me in a very, very difficult place. Because that means that I need to sell all that I have for the kingdom of God. That kingdom, that vision that God places in front of us, where there is peace and justice for all, where there is abounding love, and the whole of creation works together in harmony. And you see, I believe that that kingdom is already happening. And since I know I'm not selling everything I have to make that kingdom happen now, that leaves me in a place of, wait, I am not following this parable of the kingdom of God. It leaves me in a guilty place. Bad Christian, I hear. And that's a place where I get shut down. So I was very grateful for Bishop Doyle, the bishop in Texas, for his point of view on this. And I did put this in my weekly email, some of his reflection. He offers, what if the merchant or that someone who buys the field to get the treasure, what if that person is God, not us? And what if we, we humans, we broken humans, we 
at that buried treasure, those pearls of great price. Ooh, that turned things around. It really did. What does it feel like to be the pearl that God sells everything, everything, gives everything away to get, to be in relationship with? And of course, what comes to mind is John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him shall have everlasting life. That's how much God loves us. That's how much God loves us in this kingdom of God that Jesus is trying to describe. God loves us passionately and seeks us out and gives everything for us to be in relationship with us. And when I started thinking about the parable that way, everything changed. Because honestly, when I read this gospel, I just heard a series of quirky parables. This, mustard seed, leavening, fishnets. But once I saw God as the merchant and God as the man or the woman who bought that field, I began to see a different painting of the kingdom. Maybe you could say a tapestry being painted in front of me. One where God seeks us out as the most important treasure of the kingdom. One where God, like the mustard seed that grows into a shrub, the tiny mustard seed that grows into this large shrub that gives birds shelter from the weather. God planting a seed such as that in our hearts and having it blossom and grow. And then in the parable where the woman leavens the bread, I see God moving around this world, placing that yeast, leveling us so that one day but we will rise. And then the parable that comes in the end with the fishnet which gathers good and bad fish. I know that God's kingdom gathers good and gathers bad and the God, God's gonna figure out the difference, not us. And so I am left in a place of beholding God's kingdom that's being painted before me. One in which I'm not just welcomed, but one in which I'm longed for. What if we surrender to that kingdom that is happening, it is to come, but it is happening right now? What if we surrendered our lives to that kingdom instead of going running around and pretending it's not happening, filling ourselves with worry? What difference would it make if we joined in in that kingdom, if we sought out that kingdom? Maybe, we might be quicker to love and quicker to forgive the other pearls around us, the other buried treasures that live with us here on this earth. Perhaps we wouldn't just be eager, but we would insist on fighting for justice. Perhaps we would proclaim hope where there was seemingly none. And perhaps we too would seek that kingdom with the same passion that God seeks us, his precious pearls. My friends, God's kingdom is coming and it is here. And God is seeking us out with all that God has, all that God can give as he gave his son. Will we join in? Will we look around and be part of this kingdom? And maybe, just maybe, and maybe more than maybe, when we join in and a part of this kingdom, we will find that this indeed is what we just had to have. This kingdom is indeed what we were longing for. Amen.
in affirmation <clears throat> of our faith as Christians. Let us join together and proclaim the Nicene Creed. <clears throat> we believe in one God, the Father, almighty maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son he is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. <clears throat> we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of our sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Ever living and ever loving God, we, we praise you for your loving presence with us. Hear our prayers this morning. Matt Sussman on. Dorothy, would you be willing to read the prayers? Come among us, holy God, and give us your love and compassion to abound as we walk through this challenging season. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come among us, holy God, and grant your wisdom to those who bear the load of making decisions with, widepread, with widespread consequences. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come among us, holy God, and support and strengthen healthcare workers, quicken the minds of medical researchers, and coordinate our collective response to the coronavirus crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come among us, holy God, and be with all who are suffering with sickness and for all who are caring for them. We pray for the elderly and the vulnerable. We pray for those on our parish sick list and any other concerns we carry in our hearts. We pray for Debbie, Butch, William, Michelle, Audrey, George, Joel, Janine, Mary, Colleen, Stanley, Judy, 
Joyce, Audrey. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Come among us, holy God, and comfort and console all who grieve with the knowledge that you do not abandon the soul to the grave, but will raise your holy ones to resurrection, life, and gladness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our hear prayer. Our prayer. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your spirit that we may live and serve you in newness of life to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins. For our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Also with peace, you. everybody. Peace. 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 Peace, everyone. Peace. Peace. Peace, everybody. Peace. All right. Okay. Share screen. So for our announcements, um, just a reminder that the healing ministry happens at this service after at 11.15, from 11.15 to 11.45, and you will see on your screen the ID number and the password. Also, if you can also call in by telephone. It's private so that only you are in the Zoom room at one time with the healing minister. What there is, is there is a waiting room. You can't see who's in the waiting room. You just dial in. You stay in the waiting room until the host lets you in. You see a sign, a, a note to say, please wait until the host lets you in. And that way you will know you are in the waiting room. So write that down if you would like to, to join in that ministry this today. All right. So tomorrow evening is a Zoom call with um, New Jersey together and um, talking about racism and what we can do to combat racism in New Jersey. There are a lot of areas in New Jersey that really suffer from the effects of racism, our prisons. And so if you're interested in knowing more, many of you have said, I wanna do something. We've talked about listening, we've talked about praying. If you're interested in finding out more, you can join this call at 7.30 tomorrow 30 p.m. The information's in here to register. It's informational, so you can listen and decide not to do any more. But if you want to know a little bit more about what you can do, please join in tomorrow. Um, I know we have several in our congregation, and I'm going to be on the call, and many from our diocese as well. So please consider doing that. So next week, we're going to have a bit of a change. We're going to have two in-person services, about well, three. We have, we'll have our 5 p.m. family service outside. We will have our 8 a.m. in person, and then we'll have a 10 a.m. in person, but I will have the Zoom on and the YouTube on. So it's, you will see everything. You'll have to pull up the bulletin on your computer or print it out, because it won't be displayed in the screen like it is now. That will be the main difference. Also, the people reading will be in the church and not on Zoom. Um, I probably can still do a coffee hour after the Zoom service uh, if we wait a bit, and uh, so we'll see how that works. We'll be trying it out for two weeks. If we have very few people attending the 8 a.m. and the 10 a.m., then we will just do one in-person service with Zoom 
and YouTube. So if you're going to be away from August and you know you would come to the 8 a.m. or the 10 a.m. in person, let us know because we know a lot of people are traveling. So for the next two weeks, there's a change for Sunday. 8 a.m. in person, 10 a.m. in person with Zoom and on YouTube. All right, and that will be up and that will be said a lot of times. Um, Tuesday is also in person, that's at 6 p.m. And we also will put that out on Zoom and YouTube. And hopefully this time I will not be on mute the whole time because that's what happened last week. We continue to have difficulties. So now we have our operatory anthem and it's Jonathan Gonzalez. And I will start that now. We are always thankful for your offerings as a cent, whether it's um, electronically or by mail or now in person. We give you thanks as we offer them to the Lord. Let's say together, all things come of thee, O Lord, and of thy own have we given thee. The Lord be with you. 
and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. We give you all thanks and praise, O God, who have given us new birth into a living hope to the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. In the first of your mighty deeds of power, you created the heavens and earth. You formed for yourself a people, and through the law and the prophets, you led them on the road to life. Your child and brother Jesus Christ came to us speaking words of peace and forgiveness. He was not put to death by the enemies of life, but you kept your promise not to abandon your faithful one to the death. You raised him up and freed him from death's power. Greeting us with hands still scarred. He stands with us in our fears, doubts, and trials and protects us through faith and salvation into our glorious inheritance. Boundless joy at your side forever. Therefore, with our hearts lifted high, we offer you thanks and praise at all times for Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now in this time of our fourth separation, we remember how Jesus shared the last meal with his friends. We recall our union with him with our St. Peter's family, and with Christians throughout the world. In memory of that meal with Christ, and in celebration of that union in Christ, let us spiritually receive the sacrament of grace in remembrance that Christ died for him, and feed on him in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Behold the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. The gifts of God for the people of God. And at this time, you're invited into a time of meditation while viewing the body and blood of Christ from the reserved sacrament at St. Peter's. Let's each of us invite Christ to come into our hearts. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, refresh me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds, hide me. Let me never be separated from you. From the malicious enemy, defend me. In the hour of my death, call me and bid me come to you, that with your saints I may praise you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now let us say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Amen. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And the blessing of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Our final hymn is Seek Ye First. Now seek ye first the kingdom of God. See how that works? Got the theme going.
go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, good to have you with us this morning. Hope you'll have a good day. Stay cool. It's hot. And uh, we will have our, our usual coffee hour afterwards. And remember, we will be here on Zoom on next week. Just the format will look a little bit different. Have a wonderful day. <laughs>